All right, folks, hitting me with a quick trade special video and episode here. We've got a massive trade that happened. Happened during game seven of the final. But we're going to give you a quick breakdown because we know we have a ton of Boston fans, ton of Ottawa fans who really wanted to, to hear our take on this one. As Boston guys, this one was sh shaking us to our core. This was a big deal. So the big trade that everyone was looking for, Linus Allmark finally gets dealt. He gets traded to Ottawa for Eunice Corposalo, Mark Kostelik, and a first round pick in the 2024 draft. That first round pick is the 25th pick. It's actually Boston's pick that they're getting back. Mark Kostelik is a fourth line center, 25 years old, big body guy. And then the big piece here that shocked everyone is your Eunice Corposalo coming back to Boston. 25% of the salary is retained. So it's going to be $3 million on the cap hit until 2028. Effectively going to be Boston's new backup. CP, knee jerk, what are your feelings on this return for Boston for Linus Allmark? Can't believe the return, Dan. Cannot. It's that Collinsworth line in the Balcom Butler's book. Can't, I can't believe the call. I can't believe the call, Al. I can't believe the call. Dude, I, we, me and you put the GM hats on, and we get in the NHL, and yeah. we start doing our bullshit. And I got greedy, dude. Don't get me wrong. My hand was up in the cookie jar, dude. And sometimes you get slapped when that happens. And I was thinking about the pieces we could add back, dude. I was even entertaining seven, which I know was lunacy. I'm talking seventh overall pick. I know that's mm. lunacy. But when you're here in Ottawa, and I was like, well, dude, come on, pay me. Here's the problem. Early rumblings were like 25 and Chikrin. Yeah. And I think you even maybe put that out there on Twitter. Like, do people like this? And it's like, at the time, I'm like, well, the B's D is, is pretty sturdy. I, I like a lot of what's, what's cooking on the blue line in Boston. I don't need Chikrin. I'd want, I'd take 25 and Pinto, I'd, I, you know, or go somewhere else. And we say all the time because fans get fired up, I get fired up. The GMs are doing the best they can do. They're taking the best offer, probably, with with a few rare, rare exceptions. But it's not like yeah. it's not like Sweeney called the Wings and they were like, "Oh, we'll give you Debrinket," and he was like, "Actually, I'll take Corpy and a fourth liner and twenty five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so this is probably the best yeah. offer right now. But what I cannot wrap my head around, Dan, is that because we, dude, we saw Elliot Friedman in the elevator. Remember during game seven, this is how scoops work. People, I didn't even know. Cause we're not really like media. This is how scoops work. You're in the fucking elevator with Elliot Friedman. And, he, and we're like, Hey, 25 and chicken. And he's like, I'm actually here in no chicken. And I was like, excuse me, dude. <laughs> it's, it's rattling CP. Uh, you know, I, I was all over this one on Twitter. Uh, like you said, asking Boston fans, did they like the idea of chicken and the 25? And I'd say 60% said no, 60% of Boston fans. And, and including me. As we always talk about, everyone's delusional with trades. They always overvalue their players because they want to win the trade. And that's the, that's, the, that's the nature of trades. You overvalue your assets so you can try to get the best situation. Now, the fact that that many fans were like, no, that's not good enough. And then it turns into this. And then, yeah, you know, G and I kind of broke the news a little bit as far as Boston fans not being very happy. You know, I, I tweeted out, I was like, Boston fans are about to be very disappointed with this return. And to, to me, it's the Corpus Hollow element. Now, I don't really understand the goalie market. I really do not. Hand up. I think it's insane how little this league and GMs value goalies when it is just, to me, so clear that you need a good goalie to win a Stanley Cup. You need a blue chip goalie to win a Stanley Cup. There's a couple of outlier situations in the past 10 years, but otherwise I'm like, what are we doing? And, and you just need a good goal. Yeah, and, as, and you know what I people mean? People disrespecting Kemper, you know, like when, they, when, yes. when they're bringing up these, call, and like, listen, 100%, he was not a, a 1A goalie when he did that. Neither was Skinner, who almost just did it, right? So like, it, you can do it, but it just, there are teams that like are a goalie away. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what the f the, the complicated element of this one, too, is the Markstrom trade that happened before because that sort of set the market. And Markstrom is signed for this coming season and the next, which is a huge factor. How much do you know? Uh, I believe it's four something. I think uh, look right. look yeah. that up while I'm talking. I think it's four and a half, something around that. But Markstrom goes to New Jersey. 
for a 2025 first round pick, top 10 protected and ball. And Ball is a big, you know, third pairing, big body, twenty three year old defenseman. So that's a player. That's a roster He's player. Six, Dan. Six. It is A-A-B. six. Oh Jesus. Yeah. All right. Like, so what six. The f- so are we talking about here? So even more. Uh, Marstrom's thirty four. He has worse numbers than Olmark. Olmark is the better goalie right now. He's the better piece right now. Well, he has a better. Not. He has a better contract. So with getting a you know a young defenseman and a first round pick, I was like, okay, that's what Boston should be getting back here. Now, I, I thought from the beginning, Ottawa was an odd destination for Olmark. I didn't really understand that one. To me, Olmark, 31 years old, won the Vesna two years ago, had a fantastic year last year. I was like, Olmark is a guy that you want to have you trying to win a Stanley Cup in the next two, three years. I don't think Ottawa's trying to win a Stanley Cup next year or the year after. Maybe the year after that. So but they're, they're going to make the playoffs this year. That was you. I know. I know. I'm doing me. That was a perfect me. That was a you. That was a you impression. So I just thought I was like, oh, I don't really get this one. For I've, uh, Olmark make, made more sense for me for Carolina, for Detroit, for New Jersey. Obviously, New Jersey gets taken off the table, but Ottawa was odd to me, other than the fact that they're one of these several teams that has two first round picks this year and some some assets. Pinto was the one that stands out. Boston needs a center. Pinto would have been a great piece. Then we find out from Elliot that it ain't Pinto, it ain't Chikrin, it's just going to be 25. And even that, I'm like, that is not a good enough return. But then what we talked about, Mark is a is a add on piece. He's he's a good yeah, good yeah. fourth line player, but what we're not talking about that here. The Corpus Solo edition is Ottawa going. This isn't enough. Is 25 is too rich to send yes. back for all Mark. They're going the 25th pick in this draft is too good for, for us getting oh, Linus Olmark. And, and I uh, honestly I can't wrap my brain around that element of it. The, the lack of extension is the big factor here. Olmark isn't signing and then trading there. He's not going, he hasn't said he's going to sign immediately. That's a huge factor. But regardless, you've got this fantastic goalie that makes the Ottawa Senators 10x better yep. right now. Right now, they are a much better team. So, so the way I look at this is you never want to lose a trade. And everyone talks about, oh, Boston didn't have leverage. Boston didn't have that. I don't fucking agree with that at all. Linus Olmark was signed through the season. And everyone goes, oh, well, you know, you run the risk of losing him for free. I'd borderline lose Linus Olmark for free than have a struggling Eunice Corposalo on the books until 2028. And that $3 is not crazy it's 3.2 percent it's not not something like that of the cap but the 25th overall pick in this draft guys i think after pick 14 15 this draft drops off big time in the first round so i'm not really sure how valuable that 25th pick is that's going to be a player that's not going to play for you or be an impact for you for at least a couple of years probably three years so this trade is just baffling to me and i think i don't see how you cut it any other way Boston absolutely lost this trade. Absolutely. And, and I just don't, I don't, obviously, as you said, the market sets itself. And if that's the best offer that was out there, that's the best offer that was out there. But you got to wonder if that's what Ottawa was offering. And I, I'm sure that, that Sweeney and Neely were making a thousand phone calls and they, they might've exhausted every opportunity. But you've got to wonder, it's the 26th of June. You know, the trade happened on the 25th. Maybe wait more, a few more days, guys. See what else is out there. Because when I look at that trade, honest to goodness, part of me says you would have been better off running the season out with Olmark, run the tandem back, and then see if you can find someone desperate at the deadline. You'd probably get two first-round picks on a team that's like like Colorado this year, maybe with a struggling goalie or something like that. And you go, fuck, we could go get Allmark and possibly win a cup right now. Dude, this is my favorite take of yours. And I'll, let me get to that in a second because I just want to say everything you said about taking Corpy's contract. Because I would rather have just had 25 and keep the fucking cap space so we can yep. use that money to go get fucking Lindholm and trade for Natchez and do all the shit that I want to do. And add some fucking offensive firepower to this team. I don't need that three million coming back when you've got Bussy, who I think is fucking ready now. But he's there's, older than Swayman. There's, there's, he's a year older than Swayman. Like it is just such such an insane return that and and you were you were aiming at this, but like to lose to to come under the Markstrom bar 
the market got set. Like that's how fucking sports negotiation works. A mm -hmm. quarterback signs a contract and then the next time, or, you know, like Austin Matthews signs his deal. And then now when Connor re-ups, he, he gets to go, I will have more than that, please. Don't even fucking say a number less than Austin Matthews, you know, and then that's how it works. So like to have Markstrom set the market and then to come under that is like fucking so baffling to me. It's odd. It's odd. I, I think when you look at the two, the, the two goalies with everything included, their age, their performances of last year, their contracts, I think more or less objectively, Olmark is the better piece. So to get a worse return is a huge bummer. Yeah. And a then, huge bummer. Then the thing you were saying before is, which I love, I love the take is because I was like, oh, you can't lose them for free. But, but I love the take, dude. Keep them this year. You run the best tandem in the league back. You're you're at minimum second in the Atlantic if you use the rest of your cap wisely, right, on the Lindholms mm -hmm. of the world, whatever. And then at the deadline, best case scenario is what you said, where like a Colorado goes, I'll give you two first, dude. Worst case scenario, Dan, you probably get what you just got. Like fucking That's trade. The then you're like, hey, Ottawa, here you go, dude. Give me a fucking irrelevant first round pick, a fourth liner, and I'll take your fucking Corp Solo contract. And they're like, That's okay. my point. That's my point, Chris. And like, do you really think, and again, a lot of it has to do with Olmark. I know that Olmark has a 16 team, no trade, but you got to wonder, I'm sure some of those 16 teams that are on his okay list are probably in the mix here. Think about this past season. If, if you have a similar situation this past season to right now, think about a team like Detroit. Yeah, coming up at the trade deadline. You don't think that they would go like this. Holy shit, you're going to give us Olmark. Here's a first round pick. Like, that's what you just got, and you don't have to take the, the Corpus Allo contract. It's risky, yep. but with this return, again, especially the fact that it was June 25th, I'm kind of like, I would say get fucked. If that's what you're offering, I would say get fucked, and I would, I would try elsewhere. And honestly, maybe you just let the draft go past, go through the summer, see if a trade happens, see what, what's what. But that return... I, I think for the most part, we've seen on Twitter, people are, Boston fans are, are like, Jesus Christ, yep. is that what we got back? They're, you know, there's some more level-headed people than us being like, oh, you know, that's a good return. What? A, and I, I just don't get it. And, and, and again, that, that's, that's partially a flaw in me of not understand, or I don't want to say understanding, but not accepting mm. the goalie market. I, I, I reject it. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, imagine right now, if the New York Rangers went, you know what? We're going to move on from Shesterkin. We're going to trade Shesterkin. To me, I'm like, to get Igor Shesterkin, you better be trading two first round picks and a fucking star player yeah. and then a prospect. And Chesky well. has a l less recent Vesna than Olmark. So I'm like, how 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 is Olmark apparently negative value? Yeah, dude. And I honest and like you said, he hasn't resigned, so he could easily just bounce after one year. But and and I but I, I I've said this many times because I knew a trade was coming. I will root for him forever. I wish him nothing but oh, success my God, the best and guy happiness. In the world. Um, and I'm kind of bummed for no offense, Ottawa, but I'm kind of bummed for him because if he ends up on Jersey or something, then it's or Detroit. You're like, oh fuck, dude. Like <clears throat> we might be in the running for a cup here really soon. This is exciting. And and now you know he goes to Ottawa, and I'm like, fuck. Are you coming from the bees who have had great regular season success recently? You know, but it just it feels like a step back in terms of his um compete for a cup status well you know i believe in the ottawa senators I, I, any team that brady kachuk is on and, and and captaining i believe in i think they've got great talent uh and, and the future's bright it's a great place i'm excited for all mark you know he he gets to you know he's going to slot right back into a starting role and there's a lot of great players there it's a it's a beautiful city um what i what i just can't believe is you also have to consider, you know, Sweeney and the Bruins make that trade knowing that you're about to fucking face uh, the buzzsaw of going up against Linus Olmark yeah. multiple times Great a season point. now because it's an in-division team, and that's the return you get. You, you, you could and should make the argument if you're trading a player to an in-division team and actively making them better, I'm like, you're obviously giving me something back yeah. here. Um, so the last factor that I have here is it's already been said. Or you, we're already hearing it on Twitter. <clears throat> apparently Boston has no plans on anything with Corpus Allo other than him being the backup goaltender. They're not going to buy him out. They're not looking to package him for a, another trade. They're saying, this is our guy. This is our backup. He's going to be the backup part of this tandem with Swayman. So this trade was made being actively being like, great, we've got our first round pick and we're getting Corpus Allo and he's our backup now. 
So a, 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 a shocker, a, a big shocker. <laughs> yeah. But no, I will say too. this. I thought Corpy was fantastic a couple of years ago when he eventually got moved to L.A. I think he was really great. And last year didn't go the way he wanted. Um, I think things, things could easily turn around. He's a great goaltender, a great person. Everyone loves him in yeah. the locker room. So so I'm excited. I, I know that the, the goalie coaches in Boston are really, really strong. And is there a better guy? I mean, no, you're talking to the wrong two people. If you yeah. think we're going to say anything other other than this, but is there a better person on planet Earth to be around than Jeremy Swayman? The answer is no. Nope. So uh, we'll see what happens, but very, very surprising return for Olmark, and uh, it just adds another element to the silly season headed into the draft here. Mm-hmm.